Hello and welcome to the In Wheels Interval, a monthly podcast that focuses on strategies for reaching your potential as a successful streamer. In this month's episode, I am going to share some strategies that you can use when streaming to zero viewers. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed last month's episode and it got you thinking about why you are venturing into the exciting world of streaming. So when you first start to stream, you might have the situation that you are streaming to zero or very few viewers. This, I have to say, is completely normal, especially if you're starting out. For me, I had very few viewers for the first 6 to 12 months, so I feel that I'm quite well versed in dealing with this. So if you are sat there with zero viewers or just a selection of bots watching you, what can you do? So first of all, get rid of that viewer counter. I learned this of another streamer and I must say it's the best piece of advice I've ever had. What I found myself doing was because I could see the viewer numbers, I was behaving differently depending on the number of people who were watching me. As soon as it got over a certain number, I would change how I was streaming, becoming much more animated. But when I saw the viewer numbers were low, I would be very quiet and quite despondent. You need to ensure that you are being the type of streamer you want to be all the time and that is not dependent on how many people are watching you. Some people might pop into your stream and you might be sat there playing the game and saying nothing and they might think this isn't the type of streamer I want to watch so they would move on. You want to attract the type of viewer that will match how you stream. And that means that you have to be that perfect type of streamer all the time. So after getting rid of your viewer counter, I would next focus on talking. The more you talk, the more you can let people know what kind of viewers you are wanting to attract. Talking to yourself is an art and one you can prepare for and the more you practice it, the better it will become. So here are three ways that will help you um, ensure that you are talking consistently on your streams. First up, talk about the game. Okay, so I will often just talk and talk about the game I am playing from how it looks, what it offers, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, anything that relates to the specific game or the types of games I'm playing. This can actually promote some interaction with your viewers as well. You might say something that someone agrees or disagrees, which will encourage them to start typing in the chat. For example, I was streaming V Rising the other day and I was talking about the game and this encouraged some new chatters to respond to what I was saying. When I said, this is the first time I've done this, I'm not too sure what's going on, people would be saying in the chat, oh, I'm the same, we've just started to do this as well. And that actually meant that they followed me after that interaction. So they must have enjoyed or liked what they saw or heard. So you can actually prepare these topics about the game before you start to stream, which is always beneficial. The next thing I would say that I use is something that I call questions and answers. So the important aspect of these questions that I'm going to pose while I'm streaming is that I am actually going to use them as a prompt for me to talk more. Many times I see streamers asking a question then saying nothing, waiting for viewers to respond. But 
this is not the best way to go forward. Some viewers might not want to respond. They might not be able to respond or they might even be watching your stream on mute. The key element to these questions is to present an opportunity for people to respond, but not to become reliant on it. What we're doing is that we're using these questions to prompt our discussion as well. So although they might provide an opportunity for interaction, they also encourage us to keep talking. So you can choose any topic that you're familiar with. For example, they might, the questions might be about the game you're playing. So when I'm playing Elder Scrolls Online, I might pose the question, oh, I, what's stronger, magicka or stamina? Or they might be something to do with real life. During the recent heat wave, I found myself saying, oh, come on, who prefers summer to winter? The important thing is that you say the question, pause for a moment and then start to answer it. You are planned to answer the question yourself. And this will mean that as you're playing the game, you're constantly talking and sharing your thoughts. So the final element of my talk to myself plan is to talk about things that have happened. This is when I talk about things that have happened to me. For example, funny stories or activities. It might be what I've seen on the news, both current affairs and gaming news, or it even might be topics that I classify under the statement, you would never believe this. We are all streamers, but we're also normal people as well. And I find it beneficial to share these normal people activities while I'm streaming. I have to say here that I'm not giving away any personal details or anything like that. I'm just talking and sharing. And the benefit of this is that often throughout the week or when I'm not streaming, I might be thinking, oh, this will make a good topic to talk about or this will make a good story to tell. And then I jot it down in my note taking app ready for the next stream. Jotting these things down is one of the huge benefits of everything that I've mentioned in this episode, because you're not expected just to randomly talk about things. Everything that you're talking about using the strategies I've mentioned, you can actually plan for these before your stream starts. You can jot them down on a piece of paper or have them on your latest note taking app. And you can write down possible questions and topics you can talk about and have them all there ready. And if you need them, they are there. However, sometimes you might find that you don't need them. And because you've put something in chat, somebody might respond to that or they might put something in chat without responding. They might just be engaging with you. And this brings me to my final point for this episode. If someone says something in chat, respond to it. It doesn't really matter how you respond to it, but do respond. It gives you something to talk about and allows you to start those initial engagements with your viewers. And as these grow, they will become your community. Make the effort and respond. So as a streamer, I visit a lot of other people's channels. And one of the things that I always look for is how the streamer responds or how the chat responds to what I put in the chat. So when I type in, hello, how is everyone? I'm looking for a reply or an, an acknowledgement of what I've typed. If the streamer and the chat ignore me, then my first reaction to this is that this channel might be too big for me or the people are not welcoming of new people. I want to be part of a community that values 
it the people within the community. Now, just as a, a bonus tip here, I actually have a standard phrase that I use whenever someone says hello in my channel. And having this allows me to know how I will respond. And I can share this with you. You know, try to think of your own. Um, I always say, hi, insert the name of the viewer. I hope you're looking good and feeling fine today. And this actually becomes part of the feel of the channel. And we'll talk about this in other episodes and how we can develop this. So if a viewer says something in chat, interact with it, engage with it, acknowledge it. You might be busy, you know, in the middle of a battleground and it's fine not to do it straight away. But at the next pause, you know, scroll up your chat and see what everybody's put or, you know, if it's just one person saying hi, then make sure you respond to them and acknowledge them. So now you have some strategies that should help you when you're streaming to low or zero viewers. Make sure you're talking, make sure you're engaging with your chat, make sure that they're not coming into a silent um, stream when nobody is talking. It might even make them feel slightly uncomfortable. Okay, so let me know what you think about these strategies and have a go at them yourself and let me know whether or not they're successful. And if you want to see me in action, then do check out my content either on Twitch or YouTube. Just search for InWills. So I'll be back next month to talk about a decision you're going to need to make about the type of streamer you are going to be. So do subscribe to the podcast and share it with your community and I will see you all back here next time. If you have any questions, please do email them to me at inwills at gmail.com or use the voice recording option in the show notes. Until next month, stay positive and productive and definitely enjoy your streaming.